Welcome back. This is Sports Zone on Joy Prime. My name is Fentu Tahir Fentu. The show is proudly sports brought to you by Johnny Walker, Kivo, four in one Gary Sokins, as well as Syntex Tank. See you for Philip Achim and Daniel Kanting are here. Guys, welcome. Now, welcome back. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Have you missed me? Um, you are looking good. You are looking good. Yeah. Thank you. I got a haircut. Yeah, you yeah. And I cut the hair down, so the rasta is a bit down now. What? The shape is on board. You cut it down? Yeah, I cut it down. Are you not? No, no, I just want to show people that it's not a hair transplant. I can grow it back. again. I can grow it again. I'll cut the thing and grow it. If they do chokra, I'll do sakura. Hey. Yeah, it's okay, don't brag. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, thank you, thank you. It's okay. I'm like, my wife crowd will kill me. <laughs> my wife will kill me. Because, Charlie. Anyway, guys, I've missed you guys missed a you. lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've got a lot to go to. back. There's a Liverpool game happening right now. It's done. It's over, over the capitulation three, three, again. 3-3. Three, three. Yeah. They were 3 one up at some point. Yeah. What's going on, Liverpool? Yeah. Well, I mean, to be fair, they already knew before this game that they were... They were out of the title race anyway. No, but no, but, yeah. At least when I lead by three yeah, goes to one. Uh, to, oh. and, 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 and it's a perfect reflection of how their season has gone and like, anyway. When they are not scoring, they are conceding. When they are um, when they are not conceding, it's either they are misfiring and not scoring. So it's just so yeah. much, so much happening at the club's final right. season. Fair enough. Uh, listen, uh, we've got a lot to go through uh, on the show today. And um, there's one place for us to start, and our producer has put this at the top of the pile, and that is track and field. <laughs> I'm, I'm, surprised, I'm very surprised why. Um, but the truth is that right now, as we speak, Ghana has only one team that has qualified for the Olympic Games, which is a four by one relay team. They did it in the Bahamas. Now, there are several others who are trying to qualify uh, individually, and we've been monitoring their performances. So if you like athletics, Take a look at this report by Daniel Kranting, basically putting together and bringing perspective to the Ghanaian athletes that have been competing in the U.S. over the weekend. Take a look. With 74 days left to the start of the Summer Olympics in Paris, Ghanaian athletes are racing against time to book qualification for the Games. So far, only Ghana's 4x100 meter men's relay team have booked their place in Paris, with the individual events still up for grabs. This past week saw a number of Ghanaian athletes in action in their respective attempts to qualify for the Games. Africa Games high jump champion Rosie Bois claimed gold in the Big Ten Outdoor Championships with a winning height of 1.82 meters. That feat is still some 15 centimeters short of the automatic qualification mark of 1.97 meters. Saminu Abdul Rashid outclassed his opposition and clocked a new personal best of 10.03 seconds in the men's 100 meters, claiming gold at the AAC Outdoor Championships. Saminu also claimed gold in the 200 meters with a time of 20.34 seconds. Ibrahim Fuseni, who just missed out on a medal at the African Games, won the spring double at the Southland Outdoor Track and Field Championships, claiming gold in both the 100 and 200 meter events. Fuseni clocked a winning time of 10.15 seconds in the 100 meters and 20.32 seconds in the 200 meters. Newest member of Ghana's 4x100 meter relay team, Isaac Botsio, successfully defended his 100 meter title at the Lone Star Conference, clocking a time of 10.18 seconds. Deborah Champong ran the eighth fastest time in West Texas A&M athletics history in the 200 meters with 23.53 seconds to take gold at the Lone Star Conference Championships. Ghana's long distance star William Amponsa won his first Lone Star Outdoor Championship title. Amponsa won the 10,000 meter gold in his debut outdoor collegiate championship. The automatic qualification mark for the men's 100 meters is 10 seconds flat with a 200-meter qualification time set at 20.16 seconds. Athletes have up until the 30th of June to make the qualification mark to stand a chance of qualifying for the Games. Hmm. Uh, great stuff from a lot of them. Um, lots of winnings, but not with impressive times. Counts for little if, if you're not making the time, especially in this year. It's not like... Is the years leading to the Olympics? Is the Olympic year? Yeah. And so when you are winning, it's not just about winning, it's about if you are making the time yes. to get into the games in itself. And 
what a work put in by Danny to, to put perspective to that. Yeah. Thing. Ghanaians have seen Ghanaians winning, but the, the clarity is that winning is not enough. There, there is time to it, or there are, there are heights to it. Yes. You know, and unfortunately, they are not making it. But it's not all lost yet. Still got a couple of opportunities. June 30 for, for is still yes. some yeah. 45 days, 50 yeah. days away yeah. from now. Yeah. So uh, hopefully that will happen. But uh, it's worth pointing out that the, uh, the criteria is very lofty. <laughs> it's, it's really <laughs> Very high. lofty. It's really high. Indeed. Like, look, I was, I was looking at the women's high jump. Yeah. 1.97 meters to to qualify for yeah. the Olympics. 1.97 meters is probably winning, winning uh, heights for Diamond League events. Yeah. So the, just don't, you're going too far. The winning height for the Women's African Games Championship was not even anything close, close to, to the you, qualifying, yeah. time, uh, qualifying height for the Olympics. Yeah. The winning time of the 100 meters at the African Games was not close, close to, to the yeah. qualification time of 10 flat. The winning time of the men's 200 the meters, meter, the yeah. women's 200 meters, was nothing close to the qualification. In fact, not a single winning height or time or distance yeah. at the African Games qualified anybody to. met Olympic qualification mark. No, but That's you, how lofty the heights you, are. You, you, you can also explain it because the outdoor season just literally... Had just started, yeah, but just... also because the African Games... They were running against a headwind, a massive headwind, yeah, yeah. sometimes plus not, three, no, yeah. sometimes minus 3.5. Really, yeah. yeah, the conditions were not necessarily perfect. No, so, they were not yeah, great. So. They were not great conditions. So um, that's that. Great perspective. Thank you, Daniel, for that. So we'll see. Brilliant work. Whether you spotted. You spotted. From now to... <laughs> <laughs> Are the guys spotted? Give me yourself blooded. No, he's spotted. <laughs> he's spotted. <laughs> I don't know what... Uh, but go on Twitter and see what we'll be saying <laughs> on the report. He's spotted. No, 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 you spotted. You spotted. I spotted. I spotted. Guys, oh, good all right. Uh, so hopefully some of the Ghanaian athletes will qualify. I'm sure some of you are wondering. They didn't see Joe Paul competing. They didn't see Azamati competing. They didn't see who are some of their favorites. Uh, because those uh, these are collegiate competitions. Yeah, yeah, okay, for yeah, those who are still in school, Azamati, Joe Paul, they're out of school. Out. So you know they need to find professional races to. To compete in. And those are not easy. That's where the government must come in. Eh? Give them money. Some of them you have to pay to enter. Yes. If you are expensive. not a top athlete to yeah. be invited, invited yeah. you have, you to, have to, pay. to pay to enter. So, you know, yeah. you need it. it's a problem. It's a problem. Some way. Some way. <laughs> <laughs> Some way. Uh, but we'll keep our fingers crossed. I have an editorial on that a little later in the show, so do stick around. But let's do football now and talk African... Uh, well, MTNFA Cup, I beg your pardon, not African club competition. Dreams FC will not have the chance to go back to the Africa club inter, uh, inter club competition because they will not be winning the FA Cup this season. And that's uh, as a result of the shock defeat they suffered at the hands of Bofwa Katano. 2 1, it ended uh, in Sogakope, which was where a two legged semi final, well, not two legged. A two-game semi-final affair took place uh, on the one Saturday and on Sunday. The Dreams FC game was on Sunday. They played against Bofakwa Tano and they lost that match. Or Bofakwa won by two goals to one. Let's take a look at the highlights first. Wonderful, wonderful start from Bofakwa Tano. They've not had a great season. Um, you know, very wishy-washy form in the Premier League. But to find themselves in the FA Cup final... That is massive. They've had to change coaches as well. Yeah. Yeah. And they've had to advise the, their fans. When you say they've not had a great season, that, that's not necessarily because they don't have a good team or squad of players. Remember when the league started in match week four, match week seven, they're about, they were on top. Actually, and they were like, well, I think was, after three. After, after like three, three, matches, three matches, they were on top. No, it went further than that. Uh, to I, be honest. I, no, yeah, yeah. I, I doubt it traveled that far. No, it did. When did they get their home ban? That was after match week seven or so. Yeah. And at that time, was, they had not lost any... Their yeah, troubles had started. That's why they started misbehaving. Well, no, they sacked from Paul Manso three days before the first FA Cup game. That was around late November. Yes. Yeah. So, late November. They, they, so their struggles had started no, way... But, no. Then it will pass... That will pass three games in the Yeah. Game. I'm, 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 Monday six, Monday yeah. seven, they are about... They were okay. They were fine. They were in the mix. And they had their own problems with the crowd, and they had to play away from home at some point. It started affecting their form. Then they had their internal problems. 
Otherwise, had they played all games at home, had they kept that momentum, they could have been very much around this conversation of who could be in the top four, who could be winning the league. But well, the cup games are always special. When you've got a good team and you can prepare them for that one game, yeah. they can do it. And that's why they're in the final. Big ups to them. It's, it's, it's been really impressive. Um, <laughs> and for Dreams FC, I yeah. don't know if you... you, you Especially. You saw, yeah, uh, Karim Zito spoke about the fact that his boys were fatigued. They've reached that point in the season where um, they are done. They've played a lot of games. And this, this group is not used to playing... Um, at the highest level, week in, week out, two, three matches, a, a, in fact, two matches a week. They are not used to that. So it will get, by all means, get to a point. And I think we spoke about it yeah. um, during the CAF, uh, Confederation Cup campaign, that if they didn't manage their squad well, they reach a point in the season where they'll be fatigued, and it, it, it got to that point. And the, the, the painful thing about it is that, you see, when you have a core group of players, like uh, the 11 plus, a 4 or 3, who yeah. consistently come on and they are getting the job done, it's very difficult at this stage of the season to be rotating. You have to maintain that and hope that they're able to see you over the line. But it didn't happen for Dream CFC. But for but for Kualas, I, I love this thing about cup competitions. When you look at how um, the, their league season has been basically all over the place, before the, the first uh, the pre prelims in this uh, competition, they sacked their head coach from Paul Manso. Yeah. They used a, a, a standing coach for the first game. Then Eduardo came in and he struggled in the league, but... Cup games always give you this fresh opportunity to find a tactic to, to get to the next stage. And he's been able to do that. And they are in the final. And it's, it's, it's such a remarkable story. Hopefully, they don't go down. I feel so sorry for Dreams FC. Uh, with, with the greatest respect to Bofa Katam, they deserve where they are. Yeah. But Two wonderful goals. Brilliant goals. Two yeah. brilliant goals. And I was discussing with Danny Offset that the first goal from Da Costa, if that is in an academy, they are telling him he doesn't have the technique because he didn't go with the instep <laughs> or through the laces. Yeah. He went with what we call in Ghana parlance, Agon That's or right. Agon. That's right. That was a big, the goalkeeper wasn't ready for it. Yeah, of course. The goalkeeper. But what this means is, to poke it, what this means is that Dream FC won't go back to Africa. And so now the experience they gained from Africa DC, and I was saying I was rooting for them that if they, if they went back to Africa, that would the have cup, been a force. It would have been a brilliant experience for them to replicate or try out even better. Some of the things they did last year, but I mean, that's football. Maybe then now, the opportunity for There's no perfect those, script. those in the finals to also test what they can do. Absolutely. You see, uh, I was just checking the before quite thing. I knew I was right. They won <laughs> the first the game against Kwasa Folk. That's yeah, where yeah. the annoyance started. Yeah. Yeah. They went five matches without a win. <laughs> check, check their home form. That's what I'm saying. Five, five games in games. all competitions. They, they, they drew four, four and lost one. Match they what they beat Hazel Folk. One. Matthew, they won. Yes, I remember, that was when the bus started. Yeah. So it was right at the beginning. The beat house of folk, then they drew the next one, and the only ones who had drawn one. Which we start, which which start, which yeah, start the, got them banned from the venue? I think it was uh, a home game. Um, in Swatraman. In Swatraman. yes. That was my day what? In Swatraman, uh, here, uh, you have to come all the way to... They drew one all in that no, game. No, match, game. yeah. Go less. Hold on, hold on, hold on. This is... Yes, this is six, seven, eight, nine. Match nine. Yeah, match okay. nine. All right. Match nine. By that point, they had won two matches and had drawn six and then lost one. Got the, uh, the just the one, one defeat. defeat. Yes, and, and that, that point tally at that time was good enough to hang them around second or. No, it wasn't. They had drawn way too many. In the Ghana Premier League? Yes. <laughs> the guy is talking like that. It's EPO. Yes, I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't believe. <laughs> well, by the way, do you want to guess after the um, after the Swaziland match, or even before they they went nine matches without a win? After the Swaziland game, mm -hmm. not even after they were two games prior to the Swaziland match, and then after that, after that there was a nine, nine game stretch. Yeah, after they beat Nations, but they were went, more L's than DZ. They, they were no, I know after that, that, that I know after that, else, I know yes. after that game they just went yeah, yeah, this way. After started. that period, there were more else than yeah. these. Brilliant. Uh, anyway, let's talk about the other game. That's uh, the match between Inswatreman and Legon Cities. Maxwell Kunedu uh, up against Park Kwesi Fabian. Another two one that was interrupted slightly by heavy rain or what we like to call in football parlance inclement weather, but the game still finished. And Maxwell Kunedu managed to get one over Park with C. Faber. <laughs> it's, it's leaking just as it's defense. Hey, when Ronaldo talks, that again. Tell you. When Ronaldo, he says, it's it's leaking just like the team's defense. <laughs> but it's true, that's see, how the team hey, is leaking. See, the greatest philosopher in the history of Manchester United is Cristiano Ronaldo. Why so? Ah, brother. 
time. No, but we knew these no, things. The, the no, no, the fans said he's no, he you see, not for there. You see, some of football fans are not supposed to be honest. I understand. They say he's lying. The Old Trafford football is fans. new. The it's, day, it, Man United is a football club. No, the day football fans are not honest, we lose the excitement that it comes with. Football fans <laughs> are not honest. They knew these things. Fans going to Old Trafford knew all of these things. But once Ronaldo said it, they twisted it to mean that he was disrespecting the club or exposing the rot in the club. And they were in denial that these things were there, even though they knew it because I'm a football well, fan. I mean, what I is this? defend my club. But these things were Even Baba Yara doesn't leak like this. Speaking of which, uh, it's <laughs> what mm. yeah. uh, versus Mokwakwa Tano yeah. in the FA Cup final. Uh, Maxwell Kunedu against Ejiafo. Two people very connected to Kotoko. Ejiafo is a former Kotoko assistant coach. Kunedu, obviously, a league winner with Asante Kotoko. Kotoko always winning, even when they are not in the conversation. But that's not what this is about. This is about Nsua So you're going to give them a trophy or give them part of the my trophy? Friend, my friend. This is. <laughs> How did you have to chip? How did you just manage to my chip friend, that? My friend. Go on, please. Nsua Treman versus Bofua Katano. Mm. Okay. Maxwell could not do great opportunity for him to win another trophy. But for Johnny Jaffo himself, he would be looking at this and thinking, if we could finish the season with a trophy, what an achievement it would be for Bofa Quatano, especially after all that time wallowing in the lower divisions. Yeah, what a story it will be for these two clubs. I'm sorry to mind about Bofa Quatano. I've got back into the league. We've seen them. And we've spoken about the problem they've had. But when you, when you have a cup final to play, you can for that that one moment put all of the mess or the problems you've got in the club behind you and focus on the goal. Maxwell Kunodi's experience, he's been here, he's done it. He knows what it means to get here. Beating Lagos City is his, his former club. That would be painful to them. But that is what the FA Cup is meant for. There's no Kotoko, there's no Hal, there's no Adrian, there's no the so called traditional clubs. Obia no Obia as the tagline is. And for these two clubs. I think we're going to have one of the most exciting finals because this would mean so much yeah. for whoever wins this. You're Absolutely. Not, I'm not too sure who is the underdog going into this. Forget about the league positions. But look at the, 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 the stature of these clubs and what winning the FA Cup would mean for them and their fans. These are two clubs that are very much based in the heart of towns where the fans absolutely adore these clubs. Actually, these are two BA clubs. Two, They're two going BA. to pass the fans to wherever the, Believe me. the, the final is happening. So, so it will be some. There, there, that subtle ri uh, rivalry, there is that, that, that bragging rights in BA. There is, there is history, you know, right on there for these two clubs to, 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 to touch. And don't forget yeah. the most essential piece of information in this fixture. It was in Suatraman's match mm -hmm. Against Bofa Kwatano, mm -hmm. that got Bofa Kwatano banned, banned because yeah. they beat up the coach so and beat up some of the it's players. A game. So it's round two. Mm -hmm. Let's do it again. And this will be neutral, so neutral ground. So no, no I'm saying in terms of what the rivalry would be like, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it would be something. Good, yeah. Good yeah. A spectacle. Like Espe too many storylines. Especially, ex you've mentioned it, the storyline around this final. It's some, sometimes we need all these things yes, to happen to be able to build up the, the, the euphoria around the game, build up excitement around the game, and it's a good thing. Um, I just want to talk about that, the, the goal, the goal Abdurrahman scored. Yes. yes. That, that second goal for, for um, Instruction Man. We don't, we don't always see this level of quality week in, week out in, 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 in our football. But when, when you catch a moment of brilliance like that, I think we need to highlight it. It was... For me, this is, this is Puskas top 10 worthy. It is. It is a fantastic it's goal. It's a fantastic goal. The composure, the touch away from the defender, then to drop it back, move forward, and then hit it to the roof of the net. And this is a cup semi-final game. Yeah. And he was surrounded by defenders, was being put under pressure. Yet, how he went about it just made it look so, so easy. This is something that Luis Suarez will do and everybody will be, yeah. will be talking about it. Yeah. And, um, I think we need to highlight it. it was such such a fantastic a brilliant goal. goal. A, a think, super, super goal. When he dinged it over the defender, the touch that followed was even better because mm -hmm. he saw the defender coming from his left side. So he touches the ball to the right just to get make sure the defender is nowhere going to get yeah. nowhere going to get to the ball. Scores yeah, a brilliant goal into the roof of the net. Fantastic. Okay. So we'll see. There is no debt, uh, there's no date yet determined for when the FA Cup final will happen, but I think it will be in June. Yeah. And I'm picking up information that it might be at the University of Ghana Stadium. 
might bring it here man. yeah might be at the university of I'm, state. If, I'm, if i'm the gfa i'm yeah. deliberately leaking not through official pages but <laughs> i'm calling you i'm calling, <laughs> Danny, I'm calling you. Mm. i'll leak that fight there the uh, fight. Me, I don't, I don't want it. Uh, please, we don't, don't want any fight. No, no, no. no, no, no fight. Why do we do this thing? Which Tain? one? What? Why Which one? 30 seconds. Yes. When Cape Coast Stadium was built, every game went to Cape Coast. And now? When Accra Sports Stadium was built, every battle well, was built. What was wrong? What is the point in building infrastructure <laughs> if you can't spread it around? Force them to fix the stadium's close to be. The last time they played. Don't bring it to Accra. No, the last don't time. Bring it the last time. Two B A clubs playing in. Why? Why? They shouldn't bring it to Accra. You know. The of Ghana Stadium should rest. Actually, I should rest from doing what? They are going to play Wafu there. They've turned all the matches, all the I'm Wafu games. I'm telling you. They've turned all the Wafu games there. They're going to have this time. The pitch is already gone. So we should pamper the stadium because what? We are not saying pamper the stadium. You know what? They should take the match to Ghana. Ghana. Ghana sports. Ghana sports. We behave like the irresponsible husband. That has married a second wife. Ah, they always abandon the first. Always wife. abandon the. No. So when they married, when they no. found Cape Coast, no. they abandoned. Coast. Have you seen the Cape? How many cup finals were played in Cape Coast? Not just cup the finals. Cup. Cup. So let's take the Cape Coast. So let's take so so with the FA Cup. For, no, I'm, I'm, listen, let's talk about the FA Cup. It's, been, it's FA been going on. The last time FA Cup came to Accra, it's been two years. It's gone to Cape Coast, it's gone to Tamale, uh, it's gone to Kumasi, uh, and it's coming to Accra. What's the point? Let's take you to the Summer Boy. Summer Boy and play where? And they play at the Summer Boy Stadium. Summer Tech. Boga, we didn't play a Vika final. Though. So? So he has to come to a venue that is that, that befits. And uh, Kumasi is there. Uh -huh. We've been there. We were Kumasi but last year. But, Kumasi, there are two but, but, also, to but this is a, actually a very important point that boys have raised. Because then it brings to light why we don't have a stadium in BA. Thank you. Because football, that is football the hub in this country. Like, exactly. Yes. Because this would have been perfect. But there was supposed to be a multi-purpose uh, 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 this thing in Doma. There that's was supposed where it to is. be one day. Yes, in Doma. Yeah. It's a 10,000. And Doma is also the place with a stadium. Mm. So everything, the Sunyan and Anyway, they can bring it to Kofuridia. The Kofuridia stadium is ready. It's done. That's where they help. Yeah, they can, they can bring it to Kofuridia. Yeah, they can take it. Yeah. Speaking of which, I said Doma, the stadium is there. So mm, they which one? Yeah. The, Adriana starts the master stadium. Yes. You know, Rich. Uh, that place, you see, no rich, no rich. that stadium hosted Calf Confederation Cup matches. No, Rich. It's still no, Rich. If it can. Right. Right. Okay, anyway, guys, so that's that. We'll see when that final will happen. What about you? You tell me, give us ideas. Where do you think the FA should play that final? By the way, uh, there's um, a new WhatsApp line. So send your messages to that number. Uh, uh, my producer will send them to me. I'll read them for you. So apologies for that. But also, for those uh, those of you who are sending me uh, tweets as well on the hashtag sports, I'm seeing them. I'll take the messages. There. So send it to this number. Uh, that's not my tablet number, but I will get those messages as well. 0551575757. And I'll share those messages for the rest of our viewers and for you. Your thoughts. Uh, we are now going to go to Karim. He has been tracking the performance of Ghanaian players abroad with the season coming to a close. The sweetest. Uh, also, of course, we'll talk about Kylian Mbappe and his decision to leave PSG and where he's going next, Real Madrid. Where does he fit into the Real Madrid scheme of things? We'll have that conversation right after we talk to Karim. Karim, the all correct. How are you? I'm looking sharp. So... <laughs> ah, the sweetest. You're looking what? You're looking what? Yeah. <laughs> 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 I mean, Who told you you are looking sharp? Ah, why should I wait for you to tell Okay. Me? All right, Karim, I think they are having issues with your microphone, so we'll, we'll, get, to, we'll get to you in a bit. But guys, uh, before we uh, get Karim's microphone fixed, let me get a few messages, okay, while we wait for Karim's microphone to be fixed. Uh, like I said, um, okay. So, so uh, my director, Prisla, this thing that you have put on the screen, how can I see? You see your problem. You see, your... let me read my messages from my phone and, and then, then have some peace. I beg your pardon. All right. This message says, um, okay, here's one. All right. It says, the, Don Fabio Capello, mm. he says, uh, you are looking great as usual. Please, what do you think about the latest waterfall tourist site in Manchester? Greetings to Apia, uh, Mr. Apia Fred at Tafo in Kumase. All right, thank you very much for that. Uh, another message here uh, from uh, Prosper Okute. He says, welcome, Fen. I'm really happy to see you on the show again. I'm really happy my blues are ending the season. 
uh, strongly. I can see Spurs drawing City tomorrow. Arsenal will win the league, uh, Prosper says. Uh, okay, Prosper, very interesting. Let's see what becomes of that. Um, Mauna Bright Go says Manchester United, you be need ya. You don't respect me before crowd. <laughs> you don't respect me before. And uh, <laughs> Achu Tamaklo is watching from home and he's sending messages. Am I supposed to read his message? Oh, no, he no. likes long story too much. It's, that not, guy. Part, it's not part of the conversation. He, he says, uh, Senior Pastor is back. The team is decked out in proper Gen Z church vibes. Junior Pastor Danike in his traditional black blazer. Officer Asicho is looking like that young dude who has been made a church elder because he gives the biggest offering. <laughs> ah, <laughs> so you the spirit of God will be my <laughs> All right, Karim, let's get back to you again then. Um, uh, you said you were looking sharp. Yes. I agree, you're looking sharp. Now, can we have your segment, please? So, today's conversation is about champions and milestones. Okay, mm. no problem. Go so, on. you can see the father and son on my screen. Yes. It is a son who has achieved 200 Liga games. <laughs> The, the father already achieved that two games on top. But the son, Andre, has scored 52 goals in League 1. That is 10 more than his father. Right. In terms of assists as well, Andre, 19, his father, 14. That is five more. Mm -hmm. And it's not only them. It's also Tariq Lamptey, who has also played 100 games for Brighton. I am 86 of them coming in the Premier League, five in the Carabao Cup and FA Cup then for Europa. It's not only Tariq as well, then Nyaki Williams, he also scored 100 goals for Athletic Club. Oh, wow. So it's about milestones. Century of goals. So because I'm looking smart, I refuse to be left out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are you also celebrating I, a milestone? How? Uh, why? I am William Saliba. Nobody is getting past me. <laughs> 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 but uh, where is it? We uh, need to have reached a milestone. Ah, uh, well oh. done. <laughs> That's right. 200,000 followers on Joy Sports Facebook. Yes. Brilliant. Which you handle. Mm -hmm. 21, well done. 21 months. Okay. We've gone there. It took you 21 months to get to 200k. It was in 69k. <laughs> he has dodged the question. When you took over. Yes. It the, was what? The manager. 69. The manager. Karim. Yes. <laughs> okay, Karim, you've done well. You've done well. Give Karim well done. done. Well done. Karim, we clap for you. Can you move it on there? No, do you know what the. the the, the day you and Abedi Pele starts. See, me. that thing, I want to come to it. You relax. <laughs> relax, it's there. Okay. It's there because there's problem there. Listen, no, but, but... I posted it on Twitter and people had issues with me comparing. And I said, listen, it's a we are comparing numbers. Numbers, we are not comparing ability. We are not, or, thank you. Yeah. It's like people don't understand. Okay, we have put it there. Somebody said, why are you comparing to Andre, are you to Abedi Pele? Abedi Pele was something else. He ah. won League R titles, two of them. He won Champions League. What did uh, Andre, are you win with his 200, four months, uh, 200 games? That's not the point. If we wanted to compare trophies, we would have put their number of trophies there. Yeah. We wanted to compare number of games. Like Karim said, milestone. He's yeah. reached and 200. And the outputs in, out of those games. Yes. But I'm saying that kids are going to grow. And unless we are telling them the real story, they're going to be looking at this numbers and be saying, you can't tell me that the son wasn't better than the dad or marginally if they're looking at these numbers. And that is why when you restart, you need to be careful when you don't place context because the dad's numbers are quite impressive, really. Very impressive. Very impressive. You, see, you need to put it in context. Yeah. The dad is actually a better goal scorer than his dad. Oh, yes. Does he, I don't know, oh, yes, doesn't yes, yes. he maybe play a little further up top compared Be, to maybe his father's day? Obviously, because of, and you see, when you watch the day at the start, he wasn't getting that, that uh, line sense to be in the box. Yeah. But he showed that he had that ability. And as his career progressed, he was given that line sense. And he's, he's given the numbers to back. 50, yeah. 52 goals but, but, but in think... 200 games for someone who played out wide, played as a second striker, played as a number 10 yeah. on the right hand side. Yeah. It's, it's pretty good. Number. He's only recently gone back to the French League and being thrust as to be almost a number nine, second number nine striker. He's always, almost always been a wide player yeah. with his in league league And yeah. that was very similar to what his old boy did. You know, so his numbers that are very, and then he says it, difficult to assimilate, but it's a fact. Did they? Probably sticks the boy into the back of the net better than this old boy. That's old boy is in yeah. I don't know about you watching us right now. Tough one. If you agree that Andre Ayu is a better goal scorer 
than his father. Certainly, the numbers don't lie. He scored 10 more than his father in two games less. <laughs> if, if that is necessary. Capito. But, Capito. <laughs> yeah. hey. um, but it's a significant start, you know. Yeah. And honestly, I have been genuinely surprised I have at Andre Ayew's form this yeah. season yeah. in Liga. Because I was one of those people that thought he was done. Oh. No, the capital hasn't finished that way. No, no. Yeah. no, if you follow, if you follow, <laughs> if you follow Black Stars narratives, a lot of you, you actually think a lot of people, a lot of players yes, are who are not good at all are world class, yeah. and you think some players who are, are maybe struggling a bit yeah. are not good enough. Yeah, don't follow Black Stars yeah. narratives. Interesting. Karim, how many goals has he got this season? Um, five, five. in eleven starts. Wow. wow. So that's wow. almost. Uh, Every two games. A game, a yes, game every, every two every games. Other game, yeah. First one. Unbelievable. Who else has been impressive over the week? So I am done with the milestones. I'm now back to the champions. That is Razak Abalura. He is in goal for Petro Cup. And they won the Bulgarian, eh, Moldovan League. That is the club Nanaya Amponsa is the president of. They wrapped up the season this weekend with uh, a draw against Milsami and Abalura. He uh, made two saves in that game, and overall, in the 10 games he has played for them, kept six clean sheets. Then, also related to that is David Abagna. He was also in that game for them, completed three dribbles, and also in the nine games he has played for them, scored uh, four goals in their championship winning run. Then, Jan Jamar, he captained Namberg, and they won 3-0 against Ellsberg in the German Bundesliga 2, and he scored a penalty in that game. And then, Abdul Mumin, he is in the best form of um, the season so far, in the, from the start of the season, struggled for play, uh, playing time, but now he has started seven games in a row. He has not done that this season. Maybe he's in the recording for a Black Stars call-up ahead of the World Cup qualifiers. Then Mohamed Salis, he'll be playing in the Champions League next season with Ace Monaco after they beat Montpellier 2-0. That is, he won eight duels as a centre-back then. Barbara Man, they are going into a finale this weekend as well, just like the Premier League. Um, AEK Artins leading them with one point. Uh, that is Pauk. Pauk won this weekend against Olympiacos. That is 3-0. And Baba Rahman won the most two uh, passes, uh, tackles in that game. Then Abu Francis plays for Club Bruga. He won 2-1 against Royal Antwerp. And he won eight duels in that game. Then Mohamed Kudus um, assisted a special goal for George Etty to score his first goal for West Ham. And in the end of the season, I award his fair. Is that the solo goal against Freiburg was voted their goal of the season. And he also finished behind Jared Bowen as their best player of the season. Then Nyaki Williams already talked about him scoring his 100th goal for Athletic Club. That is in a 2-2 draw against Osasuna. Then um, Ibrahim Sadiq, he's also picking up form towards the end of the season after struggling with injuries and also form. And now he, in the last four games, he has played for AZ Akmar. He has scored two goals and provided assists, uh, two assists. That is, on Sunday, uh, Saturday against uh, Go Ahead Eagles, he scored and assisted. So that is it's good team. to see him playing again. That's Why is uh, Tekwete not there? Because Tekwete. he also achieved a milestone over he, the weekend. Yes, he won the title, all right, but he Fourth was, consecutive, pointed out. Yes, four consecutive, but he was red carded, so... <laughs> Before the end of the It's game. a milestone. Yes, it's a milestone. And yes, <laughs> he got that, red card on this. And just saying that he is not in the team because he didn't do well in the game this weekend. Fair enough. But, but I, I figured that it was worth the mention that yes. he won his fourth consecutive league yeah. title with Ludo Gret over the weekend. Jiku plays as a DM in this game. Yes, he played a, as a, a in D your team. He I, played I as a DM over there. I yes. that he played as a DM for Fenerbahce and they won 3 0 against that is Kessaris for in the uh, Turkish Super League. And he scored a, he scored a brilliant result. goal. Yeah. Wow. So what do you think? Should Otoado be considering ah. it, flirting with it? I think so we have a lot of options have there. We have a lot of options. We have plenty of specialists. They've not always sent them back. They've not given us that. Do you have, do you have an assured DM? They do, you have, they do you have an assured them. DM that we are. That, that's one of the problem positions in the Black Stars. Do we have a DM Situ. that we are. I'm just saying. You have guys who are specialists at the look, position, look. yet some way, somehow, when they come to the Black Stars, that they don't do it. Well. That is what yeah. I'm saying. take somebody who has just, is now practicing the position? It's not people. practicing it. I mean, if, it's if, it's if, if at his club, if at his club, he's shown that he can deliver the goods, and we have a genuine problem in that, and my centre-backs, I'm sure, that I don't need him there. I mean, I think but, it's our best centre-back. Have you seen Baba Idrisu? 
<laughs> he's gone on relegation. No, no, no. But did you watch him this season? Have you seen his body? I've seen him? a few games of him. That thing we need to investigate. Have I just yes. seen him? We still is... need to investigate but... what what is in the Black Stars jersey that the boys can't. Yeah. It's not also because Baba Dreesy, when he plays with, with his club side, they take better care of the ball. Than he takes better care of the ball. I mean, the, you know, no, yes, I'm yeah. saying the team takes better care of the ball. You know, of course, it's part of the team. So, but when it comes to the Black Stars, we are not even able to sustain any meaningful possession spell. So, we are always ha having to react, and maybe he's not switched on all the time to do that. Even when he's had the ball uh, at the half one in particular, his distribution is very suspect. Mm -hmm. Pass completion is very yeah, low. But he's far away from him. You need yeah. to play a bit closer. It, there was this pass that this guy was standing by him. We all went white. The and then he'll pass it to Yes, and he'll give it away. It's true. Guy. It's true. That's why I know anyway, he can miss the pass there. <laughs> thank you very much, Karim. Really? Uh, wonderful <laughs> stuff. Um, listen, I'm going to take you straight to England, okay, and talk the Premier League title race and the race for European places. One team that has picked up the best form this, uh, so far in 2024 is Chelsea Football Club. And they show their metal yet again, coming from behind, showing enormous character to beat Nottingham Forest by three goals to two. Take a look. So Man City showing no mercy at all, right briefing down, right on the next of Arsenal. Uh, and they have to play again on Tuesday. Um, and that match against Tottenham Hotspur at the New Spurs Stadium is very critical to this title race. Will Spurs step up, beat Man City, and potentially hand the title to Arsenal? They are bitterest rivals. Or will Man City make it another routine victory and take it right down to the last day? Either way, we are here for it. Guys, um, we couldn't have asked for a better script to the end of the season, which could yet take another twist on Tuesday. What's he? Danny K. <laughs> Prophet. <laughs> Rob your ring and tell me what he said. <laughs> because no, you see, the interesting thing is that the members of my congregation have asked me to make quick, quick disclaimer. No wahala. So you see, when the spirit speaks, you hear things right. and you use your human interpretation. That's to, right. That's yes. right. When Sometimes I heard, you see that say, no, I know what I saw. Yes. The spirit told me that <laughs> by the last day. Yes. You understand? You said that now win before the yes. last day. Yes. But what I heard was Man City won't win the league. So when I heard Man City won't win the league, and I heard that Arsenal will win, when I heard Man City won't win the league, obviously I knew now it's between Liverpool and yes. Arsenal. That was I remember my... your statement vividly. Yes. And I one team games, I know for sure, sure who will win. not win the league is Man, Man City. Yes. Then I but said, they are here. Yes. So between, light. between Liverpool and Arsenal, Look at the points, guy. If Liverpool were in the title race, it would have been Sunday that Arsenal would have cemented. <laughs> so that was right. This kind of permutation. I don't. Me who be I that. don't look. Tottenham Hotspur, Manchester City, especially this season, the games they played this season, the game will suit Manchester City. There's too many spaces in behind Tottenham. Their are defenses. They are just too stubborn. Too open stubborn. Open up so wide. Open. Exactly. So, and you look at the way Man City are playing. They will punish you when they get those opportunities. They will punish you. But I believe in miracles. <laughs> miracles do happen. Miracles do happen. And Tottenham, Especially in football. Tottenham also needed three points. You never know what could happen. This is football. Um, I didn't think Spurs would go to the Etihad and, and draw 3-3. Three, three. I thought they would be battered when they went to the Etihad. But they escaped with a draw. And anything can happen. If it doesn't happen on Tuesday, Sunday, miracles can happen. Kudus! <laughs> Kudus! Kudus! Jame. Listen... I think we all knew that the title would come down to the wire. Maybe not between Arsenal and Man City, especially not from the two of you. I saw it. The two of you didn't see it. But it's here now. Yeah. And certainly, I would prefer that it goes down to that very last day on Sunday. Whatever happens is going down there. Whatever happens. Whatever happens even tomorrow, City would have to confirm their champions on the last day. If they slip on the last day and then Arsenal wins... And even Arsenal gets a draw in the goal difference. Yeah, it really Arsenal. is inconsequential, except it swings it in favour of Arsenal. Yeah. Then Arsenal would now have 
with in their own hands. At the moment, they don't. They don't. Yeah. So it's still gonna go down they to Lanzi. They have his hands. It's <laughs> <laughs> look at the storylines though. So it's gonna be. I know. It's gonna be Arsenal fans between now and tomorrow pretending to or, or being genuine Spurs fans. Yes. Hoping that Spurs and for Spurs, they are they are, they are faithful to so be sitting in the, in the stadium and be thinking that. Do we need the three points? Do we take Champions League over Arsenal winning the league in North London? Or can we do Europa because we win the Champions League anyway? And hoping that's a team, but obviously you want your team to win. If every football fan wants their team to win, the players will want to win the game. But, and then he has said it. Spurs know how to play only one way. The ant, ant, ant ball, as, as people call it. They're going to be attacking Man City. They are going to be expansive. And what many people have not realized about City, this City team is, in the last month or so defensively they've been better they are not considering the chances they used to consider the start of the season in the middle of the season and now at this time of the season no team in the premier league has mastered the art of dealing with the pressure and having a way to sap it out of games like man city they won't they won't wear the pressure it, it, it will not tell on them they'll go into their game and with the way spurs plays i can imagine the balls getting in behind them and erling hard and folding and the rest getting onto the ball but the danger then also is that Spurs can be very quick on the counter. And if some of the earlier problems you saw of City at the start of the season are still there, that is where Son, Johnson and the likes also can get into those spaces. But at the start of the season, you don't want to bet against it. They've gone 36 games on beating City. Yeah. Apart from, I mean, obviously, a draw and we lose on penalties. You know, when, when we say it, it, it's almost like it gets boring and sometimes you don't want to believe it. Yeah. When we did that, running from eight matches they said there was only one team capable of winning every single game yeah, yeah. and people thought okay and that's man city yeah, that and everyone crazy. knew that yeah but everyone thought ah they've not been great, great this season yeah. it's not gonna happen it's happening yeah it's unbelievable how they do it we've got a great coach we've got a great coach you know, even yeah. when the fixtures looked yeah. like city had the relatively easier fixtures there were doubts yeah listen they've got, they've got a great coach and they have um assembled over the years, because of the winners that they've winners. had, they've got a team of brilliant, just team of winners. winners. Yeah, they understand these moments and these situations. The team that is winning the Premier League, that is on the verge of winning the Premier League this season, they were there last season. Most of them were there last season. In fact, this is they're going to fall short by one because they don't win the Champions League. Yeah, but when it comes to this time of the season where they need to find a result, just a, and make it happen, just, 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 just a quick one on this. You have a table, put it up for me. Just what a quick that? one on this Manchester City team. I don't know if you guys caught that documentary on last season, yes. Yeah, about eight nine weeks to the end of the Premier League uh, uh, season, there was this I've forgotten the game, but Grealish walks into the dressing room. And then Rodri, Haaland, them still, we are winning the Premier League. Yeah. At that point, Arsenal were in the league. They just knew yeah. that it was done. They were winning. And you see, when you have a, a group like that, it's not a single not player. Just the talent. Everybody, it's the mentality. Everybody in that team Play who plays part. a part in yeah. this team is a winner. Now, even the guys they've brought in, you look at the senior figure of Kovacic. Yeah. He's come out with Champions League. He's come out with league titles. He, he knows what it yeah. is to win. So... From Inter to from Inter Madrid, to Madrid to Chelsea. To Chelsea. So look, Pep really doesn't have a problem. There's no player on that pitch that is afraid to let it slip at this point because they've been here time and time and time again, and they consistently win. It's a situation mentioning the fact that Spurs might have something to play for, or they might not, because they have they are five points behind Aston Villa going into that last day of the season. They have two games left, so they can still technically catch Villa. But they would have to win their last two matches. So that includes beating Man City and hope that Aston Villa actually lose, lose on the last day before they... I do you know where Villa are going to on the last day. Who? Oh. They are coming to sell host Park. That is true. So Palace can do their thing. I think. Uh, so Tottenham would need to beat both Man City and I think Sheffield in the last two matches to qualify for Champions League. It's a... Uh, it's a very, very difficult reality for them, but that's their reality. <laughs> City, on the other hand, need to win against first to still keep the title in their hands. We'll take a short break. When we come back, I will go through your messages and then we'll take you around the world. Kylian Mbappe is going to Madrid, but where does he fit in? Madrid themselves have been celebrating a La Liga title. We'll be right back. Uh, old Tafo people will not be happy with you. Uh, this one's a good evening, friend. You're back with your mischief. I'm not surprised. Our stadium roof is leaking. Even our goalpost is leaking as well. Farouk in Tamale with that message. Farouk is no mule. 
Facts are facts. The stadium is leaking. The defense is leaking. The club is leaking. Um, Costa says, while you were here on TV, <laughs> Kevin Taylor is hitting your ass somewhere. We have to miss stuff. Now we win the league. He says, all right, uh, your messages are welcome. Use the hashtag SportsZone on Twitter. I'll read them. I'll share them with the rest of our viewers from across the globe. Also, if you prefer WhatsApp, send it to that WhatsApp number. That's not a regular SportsZone WhatsApp number, but I'm getting your messages nonetheless. As you've heard, I've read some of them. Um, let's switch things up a little bit and talk about this man, okay? Uh, Kylian Mbappe has announced that he is leaving Paris Saint-Germain, of course, at the end of the season. He says he's not extending his contract. Everybody expects that he will go to Real Madrid. Now, we'll talk about Kylian Mbappe and where he will play at Real Madrid uh, next because when we, we're talk, going to talk about Real Madrid themselves, okay? They wallop Granada comfortably and they hit the street to celebrate another La Liga title. You know, I, I love Real Madrid, the class. 36 La Liga titles, but it's the class. Did you know that Real Madrid refused, in fact, they graciously refused to accept the La Liga trophy after the game against Granada because Granada got relegated. So they didn't want to celebrate in front of the Granada fans who were reeling from the relegation of their club and they took it to the street. Isn't that amazing? You can't hate Real Madrid. Um, so this, classy. I guess you're a Barca fan or maybe Atletico Madrid fan, but that was some class. Um, and again, it's... Because they had the option to receive it. postmanship shown there to the Granada team that has been relegated. But uh, listen, I don't mind if you celebrate, if you want. Yeah. Right? Let me you know, it, it's you just know, just over they, they are used to winning. <laughs> that was their first, the, first in, in 10 years. <laughs> they yeah. don't forget the <laughs> you know, But they just, they just, they just calm the, 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 the aura around the club, you know, the class, as you mentioned. So. Yeah. There, there are three games remaining. And they have 90 points, so they could potentially get to 99, which would be the second highest point tally of a Real Madrid Liga win in history. The highest being Jose Mourinho's 2012 win of 100 points, which Tito matched the yeah. following season. Um, but 99, that would be something. I'm sure they'll be targeting that. Yeah, yeah. That, would be, that would be huge, especially considering the form of. Barcelona coming into the season. Not many people expected Real Madrid to dominate La Liga and win the league this easily. And um, their dominance has transcended La, La Liga. They've done it in the Champions League. They are yeah, yet Champions another League cha final. Champions League final. Probably had the most difficult path. Not probably. They had the most difficult path to the final. And they beat the best teams with pedigree. They beat the defending champions. They beat UEFA Champions League royalty in Bayern Munich. And they beat them good. They did it in typical Real Madrid style. So... This team has been, they have been brilliant. When you look at it over the course of the season, and what I love about Real Madrid is they understand that it's Real Madrid, these are the standards. No matter what happens during the season, these are the standards. They are not going to lower the expectation because of certain things that occur during the season. Um, a so couple no of months excuses. ago, no excuses. They have 40 injuries overall this That's season. Different. You look at the, fa the, at the point in the season, Frank Garcia and Mendy were injured. Yeah. Mendy was now coming, but he wasn't match fit. Alaba had just picked up an injury. Um, Militao was injured. They literally didn't have a single centre-back. Yeah. Chouamini had to play um, centre-back against Real Madrid. Yeah. He had to play centre-back yeah. against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich yeah. There are teams who, when their DMs play centre-back, it means they are supposed to concede four goals. But Real Madrid made it work. And they beat those teams even with, with uh, less with fancy so personnel. Yeah. yeah, less fancy personnel in certain key positions. They still played well. They still went ahead and they won it. And... They are here today. This is, yeah. that, that's why I love teams like Real Madrid. They don't, they don't, they don't allow their standards to drop. Yeah. And there's a reason why they are the best team in the world. Listen, credit to Carlo Ancelotti, really, because yeah. as Danny says, they've also had about two months without, for me, their best player, Vinicius Jr. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't play. And People when forget. You, yeah, when you've got a quality player like Luka Modri with his pedigree, for Carlo to be able to manage Modri to understand his mm -hmm. new position in the club, it's not that simple. Modri wants to play. He thinks he can play. Yeah. But has been able to coach him to understand that he will play, but that is his role. And even Tony Cruz knows that yeah. he's no more a 19 minutes player. Then, when Vinicius was away, they didn't bring in a striker to replace Benzema. Hostello came in as a backup, and he always was. But for Carlo to turn Bellingham into the a goal trusted source monster. of goals, it's incredible. Second highest scorer in La Liga. Yeah, second highest scorer in La Liga. To, to turn him into. Because 
That is an aspect of Billingham's game that nobody knew about. Mm -hmm. Nobody can sit anywhere and lie about the fact that they, they always saw goals to him, blah, blah, blah. We knew he was a good midfielder, but to turn him into somebody arriving in the box at the right time and scoring all kinds of goals is credit to Carlo. And just a statement. Yeah. Remember, they played the whole season with their third keeper. Yeah. That's right. Their third choice That's right. Keeper. That's right. Yeah. People, yeah. Don't, people forget that Kotoa. Yeah. 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 And then they brought in Kepa, who also Kepa got injured. injured and then Lulin came in, Kotoa yeah. came back, couldn't get the position back. And the, the coaching is great. I think, yeah. and Carlo deserves. And for me, as I was telling Danny, that when you look at the game they played over the weekend, mm -hmm. they rested almost all their starters. Yeah. But the good thing is, Throughout this season, whenever he's had to pick the second or the B side or the second straight side, when they've played, the reason why they have 90 points is because when he's called upon these players who they play deliver. one game in four weeks, one game in three weeks, the standards are still there. Yeah. So for him to keep them sharp, match fit and all of that, that is great coaching. And Carlo has said that they will use the remaining three games to prepare for that Champions League final. That's, yeah. no, that's how you know too. trouble is awaiting uh, Borussia Dortmund. That's on June 1. And we here at Joy Sports will be at the Aviation Social Center with the Rep Your Jersey, the biggest gathering Quick. of football fans in Ghana. It's on June 1. It starts from 1 p.m. all the way till after the match at the Aviation Social Center. Quick. There will be uh, lots of stuff, right? Chichinga. Kebab, Chichinga, mm. beer, uh, Johnny Walker, uh, Sintestan will be there to give you water. Wash your hands. It's Kivo Gary Mix will be there. Four and one. Right, listen, bro. Like you don't want to miss that. On June one, Aviation Social Center will be there. Uh, speaking of which, um, we've just praised Real Madrid for how amazing of a team they are. But if there's one man that could make them better, Kili, Kili. it is this guy, Kylian Mbappe, who just announced that he is leaving Paris Saint Germain at the end of the season. What is wet? <laughs> it was it's like, it's like the least, the worst kept secret in the world. But now that he's announced that decision, we know another worst kept secret. Okay, the second worst kept secret is about to come out, which is his expected um, move to Real Madrid, where they have where Kylian Mbappe plays, arguably one of the best players in the world, Ballon d'Or candidate Vinicius Junior. That leaves the question, when Kylian goes there, where do you see him playing, Ticho? Briefly on this. Oh, man. The right-hand side? No. Because surely he's not... I mean, who is better, Kylian or Vinny? No, put, ask the question well. Are you asking who's a better player, who's a better fit for that side? Who's a better fit for that side? And who's the better player? I think, I think Kylian Mbappe is the better player, but I think, I think Vinicius Jr. is a better fit for playing on the lines as a, as a typical winger who's going to stretch a position. Isn't that where Kylian has perfected his game I as think, well? I think Kylian, when, when Kylian has been devastating, he's come narrower, he's come almost into the half space. That is where he, he terrorizes people. But to be when, fair, that's when where Vinicius scores his goals from as well. You no, know, when it, goals are different, but when Vinicius has done what he did to Kimmich, yeah. When, right. when Vinny has done what he did to Kimmich oh, in, the, in, the, in the Champions League semis. That was ugly. <laughs> yeah, when, when Vinny does that and, and drags the ball into the box to create or score, brilliant. But Mbappe is not Vinny in terms of doing what Vinny did to Kimmich. He's got it in his locker, but when he's been devastating, it is when he's been able to get very close to the box, into the half space. But Carlo has shown that he doesn't need Mbappe to act like a proper number nine to get him the goals. Unlike Louis Enrique trying to make Mbappe a proper number nine. So I think between him and Vini, and Vini this season also tested being, tested being, you know, in those central positions. And the good thing is, between the two of them, they can always alternate or, or rotate. And that would be a headache for Carlo to figure out how he's going to pan out. But yeah, what a signing that would be for Roma if it happens in the end. Uh, Benaya and, uh, and uh, Pamela, would you show me the, the Mbappe video, please? Thank you very much. Saying his final goodbyes. There it is. Uh, what a guy. What a player. He's an look at the agent. Look at the way he's looking at... He called Paris Saint-Germain one of the biggest clubs in the world. He's lining up to call Real Madrid the biggest club in the world, isn't he? Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, but PSG are one of the biggest. The players. same question for you. Obviously, I think that's the biggest thing in everybody's mind. Where is he going to play? How does he fit? How does he make this Real Madrid team better? This, this conversation is very interesting, and I, I, I like that we have it, but there's a boss. Right. And the boss, season after season, has shown that, look, 
you can you can bring him Zidane, Ronaldo, Ronaldinho today and he'll figure out how to use them. That's that right. is Don Carlo. We were all wondering where Bellingham was going to fit in and then slotted in quite easily. They are in the Champions League final, they've won the league. I think for me, I'll not be surprised if one of the midfielders in the midfield three drops out yeah. and Bellingham drops back into the midfield three and Mbappe slots in a, in a, in a simple 4-3-3. That's, that's how I think it will, it will go down. But again, if you... Uh, I think Situ answered the question brilliantly if you are comparing Vini to, to Mbappe. Um, overall, I think Mbappe is a, is a better... I don't even think it's, a, it's an argument. I think Mbappe is a far, far better player than Vini. But what Vini is good at, what Vini specializes in, that is being a pure winger on the left-hand side, hugging the touchline, drag, stretching things, picking up the ball, running out of position. I don't think there's anybody in, in world football currently who does it better than him. Yeah. And that's the thing. You, it's, 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 it's about your, your functionality or your usefulness in the system. That's right. And for Vini, he's, he's mastered that, that art and that, that role in the Real Madrid team. For Mbappe, obviously, there's a space for him in this Real Madrid team. I, I don't even want to begin to think about doubting whether he can do it. Because oh, this guy... Obviously. obviously. <laughs> no, no, no. no. And, and I'm saying that because I've seen conversations around with Hazard. Okay, Hazard is a completely different... No, no, no. Different attitude. Different attitude. This, this guy is a go-getter. Even different personalities. When, exactly. when Hazard yeah. worked, worked into the Real Madrid team... He was satisfied. He walked in to meet winners. He met Sergio Ramos, met Cruz, Modric... Hazard Benzema. Was, Benzema. Hazard wasn't going to be the one to lead them to win anything. Mbappe is going there as a World Cup winner. When he looks around that dressing room, maybe only Tony Cruz has the World Cup as well. Yes, the, one thing, the one thing he doesn't have yet, then, the champions. Is a champion, but he has the pedigree and the character. He's played in two top World Cup finals. It's a big I actually he dare say it. that. Yeah. The moment Mbappe walks into that Real Madrid dressing room, he automatically becomes the biggest player. No, he is. He is the biggest. Yes, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, no, but so see, that's a, that's a very. But no, no. The thing about the Real Madrid dress. No, 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 no. Before yeah. he, before from he the outside, ends, from the outside, yeah. Yeah. from the outside, yeah. we'll view you. him. Hello, let, let but in the, this on the inside, yeah. it's and I said something on, on Twitter the last time. Like in the last ten years, when Real Madrid have signed players before all of this month, they were desperately signing players to help them win it. Yeah. These days, the best players in the world know the that to Real the surety of winning Champions League is when you're the final of getting to Real Madrid. So. Mbappe, if he wants to win the Champions League, is beginning to look like he needs Real Madrid mm -hmm. for he, Mbappe, to win the Champions League. Because without him, Madrid are in the final. Without him, two years ago, they won it. Without Ronaldo, Bale, Ezema, and Co., Real Madrid were struggling to win it. With them, they won it. But now, without Mbappe, Real Madrid are still good to go. But Mbappe needs Real Madrid to be able to win the Champions Imagine League. Imagine the scenes when Mbappe goes there and then five years come and Real Madrid don't win the Champions League. That would be some scenes. We'll be, we'll be, we'll be there. It would be. He, he will have his uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um Leverkusen, brother. 50 matches now unbeaten. Okay, and they look like they are going the season unbeaten. They won again this weekend against Bochum. They have one game against Augsburg this weekend. And then, obviously, that would be the end of that. Uh, let's roll the highlights right now. Um, but quick word on Leverkusen. I think certainly at this point, we, we can agree that they are going on beating. Augsburg are not the ones that are going to pour I think they'll go sand in their gary. I think they'll go on beating in the league. I think they'll win the Pokal. The biggest fear for me is when they come up against Gian Piero Gasperini. It's fascinating, good, brilliant. And this team has picked or picked form at the right time of the season. They are playing some flamboyant football as well. And I know many people have forgotten to live at Leverkusen because they never lose. But I learned to are playing some very fabulous football. And that final, really, for me, it's even going to be more captivating than if you like the Champions League final. Because of the, 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 the difference in quality of Real Madrid and Dortmund. But Leverkusen and Atalanta, bring it on. What a game that will be. What a game. Uh, so anyway, so that's that. Just one game left uh, to the end of the season. They play against Augsburg on the last day. And uh, once they don't lose that much, they uh, go the season on. Where do you place it, though, Danny? Uh, as most invincibles or the Vakuzin going the whole season winning the treble without losing the game. That would take you to what 53 games if they win if they win everything. Everything. Would you would you equate it to the Invincibles? Is it better or is it still not at that level yet? The Invincibles. No, this triumphs that. It's not even the conversation. I so. No, I think the Invincible. No, this triumphs. No, no, this triumphs. The one only the Premier League. And, and, and besides, yeah, the Invincible, the there were too many draws to be fair. Think, what this is, what this is, is a winning about? machine. Let's yeah, not even go. This what do you mean they were too many draws? 
It's a this, winning this, machine. This, this, no, this, this is what does he mean by there were too many draws? I mean, yeah. ah, there were too many draws, were they not? They, they had 90 draws, points. They, uh, Massa. They had 90. So you, you want them to replace their draws with losses? With wins. Right? Wins like Leverkusen. Win. Well, I, don't, I don't think any team okay. achieves The Invincibles this. played four games more in the league. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this. All right, guys. Before it's we wrap up, let league. me just say this. Okay? Promises backed by no action are just lies. Oh, yeah. And when you break the promise, you break people's hope. And this message is to the people at the Ministry of Youth and Sports. Before the African games, we were here. We had conversations around what should happen and what they needed to do to prepare the athletes for the games. Not a lot was done. They put them in some small camp in Cape Coast, brought them here. The ones that trainer brought no support whatsoever. We were here. Nobody forced them. In fact, it was a few days into the games. Then they held a press conference and promise the athletes that if you win a gold medal, we'll give you $3,000. If you win a silver medal, $2,000. If you win a bronze, $1,000. The, the athletes did not act for it. Joseph Paul Amor did not need to be promised $3,000 to go out there and fight to become an African Games champion. Rose Yabwa did not need that promise to go and win. Cardman Yabwa, uh, Cardman Yabwa certainly didn't need that. You promised with no gun to your head. You looked at your finances, looked at your income, looked at your money and said, I can't pay this. We are two months after the African Games. Not a peswa has been paid to these athletes. And I think that that is embarrassing, it's disgraceful, and I'm gonna say, find the money and pay up. Because we warned you, don't make promises you can't keep. You came to the people of Ghana and you asked for $245 million for the games. You said $46 million of that was to go into organization and operations. Some of which you allocated to be paid to athletes as bonuses. Where is the money? When they won the medals, you, put, you gladly put your arms around them. You celebrated. You did the photo ops. You were happy. When it's time to pay up, you don't pay up. Why? Because they are lying. Let's stop this disingenuous attitude. Nobody forced you. If you knew you didn't have the money, don't promise them. 69 medals, you promise the money. Where is the money? Where is the money? Because greatness is not determined by the number of promises you make. It's determined by the number of them you keep. And that's a message to the people at the Ministry of Youth and Sports. My name is Fentio Tahiru Fentio. Thanks for your time.